Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Unrestricted Sports. I am Brendan, and I'm joined by my co-host, Nolan. Today, we are talking about Patrick Mahomes' contract agreement with the Chiefs, a 10-year, $450 million deal that can be worth up to $503 million. To break that down for you, that means that over the course of one year, he's getting paid basically $50.3 million. One day, $1,307 and like 800 some dollars with that as well. For one hour of his time, he's getting paid $5,742. For one minute of his time, $96. For one second, a dollar and 60 cents. He could literally drop a dollar on the ground and not even have the time to pick it up because it wouldn't be worth his time. That being said, $140 million of his contract is guaranteed if he gets injured, which means that's a lot of money that the Chiefs could end up paying to a hurt player should Mahomes be injured for a long period of time, or if he just leaves the league because of an injury. Hopefully that doesn't happen, obviously. But now we are going to discuss this, and if it was the right move or the wrong move by the Chiefs. And uh, Nolan, I already have my ideas on this, but I want to hear what you have to say first, so I'll let you go. Okay, so from from the uh, I'll start with the Patrick Mahomes point of view because it's a short one. For Mahomes, um, in terms of money, this was an incredible decision for him because uh, he just had the best. I think what was it? Three years of his career. I yeah, mean, not including much. his rookie year, but like the best two years of his career, he played on a rookie contract. So if any yeah. if any quarterback deserves this amount of money, it's Patrick Mahomes. Um, without a doubt, um, if he wants to win, I don't think this was the right move. Uh, and I'll get to that in a, in a minute. Um, but starting with the chiefs now with the, the chiefs point of view, locking up Mahomes was a super good idea for chasing the dynasty that they probably want. Uh, but Mahomes is, is currently taking up uh, a little under, I think there's no exact amount yet, but around 20% of the team's cap after signing this contract. And that's a lot. Um, yeah. So to, to, to break this down for you in terms of other players they would have to pay. So this offseason, uh, most notably, is Chris Jones. He, he wants to get paid. And if he doesn't, he says that he's going to sit out. And I think this Patrick Mahomes deal is either going to mess that up for him or Chris Jones won't be on the, the Chiefs next season. Um, in the future, though, uh, the Chiefs are going to have to pay uh, what should have been the Super Bowl MVP, Damian Williams, in 2021. Uh, come 2022 free agency, they're going to have to try to re-sign Tyron Matthew, Travis Kelsey. Um, and then if they want to keep him, Mahomes, protected in 2022, they're also going to have to re-sign Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Fisher. The following year, they're going to have to re-sign Tyree Kill and McCole Hardman, who are essentially the same player but McCall Hardman's a little underdeveloped compared to Tyreek Hill. And then that yeah. following year in 2024, they have to try to lock up Frank Clark. All of those players I just named are very high-performance guys for the Chiefs. Um, I would say, depending on how Clyde Edwards-Hilaire works out, you could maybe not pay Damian Williams and just let him walk. Uh, you know, Depending on how the offensive line holds up, you could afford not to pay one of them and just draft somebody. But I can't talk about that because I, I don't know who's going to be available at those times. But just looking off of who they have to sign in the very near future, I don't think that that long of a deal was the right idea. Because if Patrick Mahomes signed a five-year deal with the Chiefs and won at least one Super Bowl or did very well, I can't foresee him not signing with them again, you know? Yeah. See, now I'm going to get into my point of this. You did bring up some good points about who they have to resign, and obviously there's going to be people out there who are Chiefs fans who are going to say, well, we could just draft those guys to replace them. Maybe you could, but that's not a guarantee, and that's very hard to do. It's very hard to replace good talent. That's If it was easy to do, everyone would be doing it. The simple fact of the matter is that the only team that's really consistently been able to do something like that is the Patriots. Now, maybe the Chiefs could become the next Patriots. I would hope not because I'm a Patriots fan. I'm also a Lions fan, by the way, but you know, that's not really relevant to this conversation because we don't win anything. But, you know, that being said, is that likely? It, history says no. Now, the, could the Chiefs do it? Maybe. Maybe they could draft these guys' replacements. But even then, that's a big strain to put on your team. There is, this has been out here for a while now. 
the top paid quarterback in the league, the top five paid quarterbacks in the league, in the history of the NFL, not one of them has ever won a Super Bowl because they don't have enough talent around them. Now, I'll give the ca- the, the caveat for what will make this deal good, all right? The Chiefs have to win at least two more Super Bowls. And even then, that would be kind of a, a little bit of a letdown, I would say, given the current level of production that Mahomes has and the level of hype around him. Uh, two Super Bowls is the minimum for this deal to work out. Um, one Super Bowl, they could do that next year, maybe, because they'll still have the same team, basically. But with that being said, you have to look down the road, and it's not it, you could draft those guys' replacements, but it's not likely. It's not as likely as you know, signing the given talent and then developing behind them instead of just letting them go and then drafting. That There's a big risk that comes with that in terms of talent that you're losing. With that being said, two Super Bowls is my minimum for this deal to even be considered a success. One Super Bowl is not enough because they could do that next year and it will, you know, Mahomes' contract isn't even coming to, into effect until uh, 2022, I believe. Um that's when the first cap hit's really going to start hitting because they exercise their fifth-year option with him, and he's only going to his fourth year. Um, so there's that. With that, with all of that, the reason that I say two is because, if one, if that team can't stay together and they can't find cheap replacements and they only win one Super Bowl with that team that's before his salary cap comes into effect, you, you know, he hasn't won anything without those guys. That would be considered a loss because once those guys are gone, if he starts to underperform, then that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a massive problem. You can't pay that guy this much money and then have him start to underperform when he loses talent around him. He has to. He has to be something special. All right, and we haven't seen him without talent around him yet. So now that being said, kind of- once again, I'm not taking shots at Patrick Mahomes. I think Patrick Mahomes is a very good quarterback. I think he's very good. I think he's the future of the NFL after guys like Breeze and Brady leave. He is the future. With that being said, if he starts to underperform, even a little bit, it's going to be heavily criticized. And combine that with less talent, it's going to make it even harder to win another Super Bowl after that. So there's a lot of pressure on Mahomes now too. And it's not the type of pressure that he feels on a football field. It's the constant pressure off of it from his own fan base that's going to be the problem. To put this in perspective, guys, never once was Tom Brady a top five paid quarterback. Never once was he paid, even after his 2007 season, he was never the top five paid quarterback. He won six Super Bowls. If Patrick Mahomes takes this much money and he only wins one or two more Super Bowls, two is the minimum for me to say that it was a a decent decision because that's still pretty good. Two Super Bowls in a 10 year span, I'd say that's pretty good. That's above average for most teams. But with that being said, it's a big risk because you have teams that can put together rosters that win without overpaying their quarterback. And is this an overpay? I I wouldn't say so yet. It it depends on how it, it ultimately, it depends on in 2037 or, uh, no, it's 31. It would be 31. I, 31 when Patrick Mahomes is 37 years old. It depends on how many Super Bowls they've won to determine that. Um, if they've won two that as a minimum, I'll say, you know, it, it, it kind of worked out for them. That was pretty good. If they win more than two, it was a great idea. It was a great idea. All right. In a 10 year span, winning three Super Bowls, great idea. Good win. Good, good idea. That was a good signing. But if they don't win any Super Bowls, and this is where it gets really bad. This will go down as the worst contract in NFL history. All right, it, it is the most. Mo- it will be. It will be the worst contract in sports history because Mahomes is now the top paid athlete of all time. In a in over over a very limited sample size, he has become the highest paid quarterback ever, the highest paid athlete ever. The level of pressure on him, the level of media scrutiny on him, if he does not live up to that contract and deliver at least another two Super Bowls to Kansas City, he it will be the worst 
experience for the Chiefs organization and for Patrick Mahomes because they will never hear the end of it, how they signed him to a $503 million deal. He better win some Super Bowls because if not, it's it's going to be bad. And to put this in perspective, he's making, obviously, Patrick Mahomes is on a 10-year deal. But talking about what you were talking about with quarterbacks getting paid and then not living up to that contract, I think Matt Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong, but after that Super Bowl Super Bowl um, season, I'm pretty sure he got re-signed to a big contract, led them to the Super Bowl that previous year, and played well. But now look at him. He's taking up – he has the second biggest contract in the NFL right now behind Mahomes, and Matt Ryan's making $300 million less at $150 million, and their team has – minimal around him, a washed-up Todd Gurley now. Julio Jones, who's obviously getting paid a lot, good receiver. Calvin Ridley. Nothing really pops or screams Super Bowl around that team, especially defensively. Um, so, so like you were saying, Brendan, if, if this Mahomes contract eats up the ability to give Mahomes a target to throw to, this is going to be a very bad turnout for the Chiefs in their future. Well, yeah, and I mean, I hate to say it because I, I would like to see Mahomes do well. He was very fun to watch. Even as a Patriots fan, I enjoyed watching him because he gave us a level of competition that we really haven't seen since the Steelers were last good. Um, and I enjoyed that personally, even though I hated it at the same time. Because, uh, you know, obviously we have a two. Uh, Mahomes won one, we won two, and we won two of the more important games. Just saying. But that being said, uh, they did, you know, we, we have a two-win loss two to one win loss ratio against the chiefs right now, but they were fun to watch. And I can admit that because it was fun football. But with that being said, what happens if they can't repay, if they can't pay Travis Kelsey and Tyree kill and what if they can't repay their already, their, their top tier defensive players who they really kind of need to even have a semblance of a defense. It, it's going to put more pressure on Mahomes with less to work with. He's taking up about twenty percent of the team's cap, like you said. I, I think it's a. I think it is about twenty percent of the team's cap. That's a lot of cap to take away. It's the most in NFL history that has been taken away from the team. So how can you expect them to do it when teams have had far less in the top? They've been paying their top five quarterback way less in terms of pay, and they still haven't been able to field a winning team. Mahomes, he's talented, yes, but is he that talented? I, I can't give it to him yet because I haven't seen it. No one has ever – the level of talent that we will have to see come out of Mahomes will be a level of talent that we have never seen in the history of the NFL if he lives up to that contract. That, that's, that, that, that's really it. He will have to will his team to victories that are impossible to win because he, you don't just find another Tyree Kill in the draft. You don't just find another Travis Kelsey in the draft. You don't find good tight ends very often. Case in point, Rob Gronkowski, the Patriots still haven't found a replacement for him. Gronk retired almost three years ago from the Patriots, and now he's on the Bucks. So what are you going to do? You, you, there's, you, you can't just rely on finding another Kelsey. That's not going to happen because it just doesn't. It, it just does not happen. All, there are not tight ends like that just coming out of schools. All the, play, all, right? all the players on the Chiefs that they would have to pay in the near future are once-in-a-lifetime talents. Obviously, you can find other good talents. Like Tyron Matthew isn't the only good safety in the league. Travis Kelsey yeah. isn't the only good tight end in the league. Tyreek Hill isn't the fat. Isn't always going to be the fastest wide receiver in the league. You get my but point. The odd, but, but the, the odds, odds of finding matter. another Tyreek Hill or another Tyron Matthew are low. Or even if you know that there's a guy like that in the draft, what are you going to do? You can't just if the guy. If you think the guy's a mid second rounder, but he's an all generational talent, do you use your do you waste a first round pick on him to overreach because you don't have the pick in the second round to get it right? Or you know you know what I'm saying, right? Like yeah, what you sign you risky want? deals. It also depends on where your draft picks line up because it's not just oh well we can draft him through the draft because we'll know who's really talented. You might know who's really talented, but you might not have a team that's willing to trade to, for you to get that guy. Most of the time, if your team is winning, you're going to be picking low. And then once, and I don't think the Chiefs will ever be a losing team, so they'll probably at worst they'll only be middle of the pack team. Even if this contract doesn't work out, I still see them, you know, at a minimum, even in their worst season, the only the worst I could see them going is probably eight and eight. 
but will they have the talent to compete at the playoff level is the biggest question. And I just, it's hard to see because you, like you said, you can't pay all these guys. And usually the person who takes the pay cuts on the team is the quarterback. It's, it, it's the quarterback. It's not the wide receivers. It's not the tight ends. It's not the linemen. It's definitely the not the running backs. Take, yeah, the, the quarterback takes the pay cut so that the guys who have shorter careers can play for more money so that he can have so that the quarterback can have talent around them. That's what all the successful quarterbacks have done in the past. Quarterbacks who take up a, per, a large percentage of their team's salary cap, guess what? They they don't they don't win. They they just don't. Um and there's obviously Matthew Stafford, but he's kind of a different case because he doesn't really take up a percentage of the team's cap that much. And he his team isn't invested in trying to get better. They just care about making money. So that's kind of an, an anomaly case. Um, but, I mean, seriously, you, there's the, there's a reason why the top five quarterback has never won. Because you have to throw the ball to someone. It doesn't matter if you can if you have a silver arm and you can throw it perfectly. If the guy on the other end of that can't catch, it doesn't matter. If the guy on the other end of that can't catch a ball or can't get separation, it does not matter. Like, you're, you're, you're stuck. If you don't have a guy who can catch the ball or get separation, we saw what happened in New England last year. Brady would hit a guy in the hands and it would go through his hands. Or the guy would be so close to the guy defending him, you would have thought that the guy was trying to stay close to him. Like, good quarterbacks cannot work without good wide receivers. And that's why quarterbacks historically take bigger discounts because they know that they're going to have longer careers, they're going to make more money, and if they win a lot, they're going to get endorsements. And this isn't to take away from Mahomes. No, we're not, no we're not trying. Not. We're not, not trying to say that Mahomes wouldn't perform with worse receivers, but we're trying to say he'd be more. He'd successful be more if successful he if he Hill. kept. Yeah, and like he's going to be more successful with Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey than if he was working with a, uh, you know, and a very and, not take, and a very good know. counter argument for what we've been saying is. Oh well, you can't find another Patrick Mahomes, and that's true. Patrick, Mah- I don't think if the Chiefs got rid of Patrick Mahomes, they could win another Super Bowl with the talent that they have right now. I think Patrick Mahomes is the reason they're doing so well. Uh, you know, he's obviously a very rare talent uh, and an integral part of the Chiefs' success, uh, both the past three years and now for the next ten years. Um, but it's just to say that. It'll be interesting to see how Mahomes' game transitions from having a very good O line, very good very receivers, good receivers, a solid defense to what could be shambles, you know, an occasional wide receiver option to throw to. You know, a defense with a couple big name guys, but nobody who's really, you know getting paid a lot. Yeah. So basically what this comes down to for me. If Patrick Mahomes does not win at least another two Super Bowls in a 10-year span, which is above average, I'll give it that, but this is an above average contract. This is the top contract in the league. If you're being, being given the top contract in the league, you have to show for it. Um, and he, you can say, oh, he's already shown for it. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure, Chiefs fans, you don't want to go the next 10 years and be in, living in mediocrity. So let's let's cut the crap there, okay? You want to see another few Super Bowls, all right? If Patrick Mahomes does not win another two Super Bowls at minimum in the next 10 years, this contract will be the worst contract in the history of sports. I think I think that the, it's not going to – I don't think this contract is really going to hurt the Chiefs until about – If they about, win, it in, will not be bad. Until about – no, 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 cap-wise. I don't think it's really going to really start hurting them until about 2026 because if you look at contract breakdown year by year – he he doesn't start making uh more than 5 million until 2027 so that leaves a little bit of flexibility in who you want to resign and how much you can give them and obviously you can turn some contracts around into signing bonuses and and stuff like that but um but i mean you can't have you can it's not like you can sign every player to a $1 contract and everything else becomes a signing bonus yeah i mean Guys like guaranteed money, yeah. and Mahomes got a lot of guaranteed money. Ooh, ooh, we haven't talked about this yet. Very interesting, I think. Is on this thing, there's a no trade clause on Mahomes. 
Yeah, that's another problem that I personally have. Obviously, he can waive the no-trade clause if he wants to be traded. But yeah, I, yeah. I, but I, what team is going to take on that monster contract? Exactly, exactly. The no-trade clause is basically built into the size of the contract because no one, if Mahomes is at the point where the Chiefs are willing to trade him, no one's going to take on that contract. No one. Maybe Bill Belichick would take it on because Bill Belichick can do crazy stuff like that and it works out somehow for him. But besides that, no one's going to take on that contract. It's crazy stuff, man. The quarterback market is... And and this is the kind of money that Dak Prescott wanted. Can you believe that? Yeah. I mean, it's disrespectful, to say the least, Mm -hmm. that he wanted that much. Uh, Man, I... I, I don't know. It's a lot of pressure <laughs> to put on anyone to yeah. have that. If he underperforms even a little bit, it's going to be under a microscope. So it's a lot of pressure. And uh, ugh, it, it, it is not going to be pretty if it doesn't go well. He's I'll just a, say it like that. He's the next big quarterback, man. Yep. Will he break the trend of top five paid quarterbacks winning a Super Bowl? Maybe, but it's uh, not going to be easy. Definitely not going to be easy. But that's it for today's episode, guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Helps out the channel a lot. Uh, Make sure you leave your own comments down below on how you think things went today, what you think of the Kansas City contract, because obviously it's a pretty big contract to give anyone. And uh, we will see you guys next time. See you.